Professor Dave here. Let's derive the quadratic formula. He knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Professor Dave explains. For several tutorials, we have been learning how to solve quadratics. Some are easy. 4x squared equals 64 requires just a few steps. Working from the outside in, we divide both sides by 4. Take the square root, and x equals plus or minus 4. If we take the same expression but add an x term, it gets trickier. We just saw how we can sometimes solve polynomials by factoring or by completing the square. But there are times when neither of these strategies will be especially easy or even possible to perform. In general, it would be nice to have another method where we can solve by brute force rather than having to perform some algorithm. We need an equation where we can simply plug in the coefficients of the expression and get the solution. Fortunately, there is such an equation. It's called the quadratic formula. But instead of simply looking at it, let's derive the equation, as derivations always help us appreciate the beauty of math that much more. Let's start with a general polynomial equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a is not equal to zero. Let's try to complete the square, just as we learned before, but with this general form instead of a specific example. Remember, the first thing we would do is divide everything by a, because it's easier if there is no coefficient operating on the x squared term. That means we get x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a equals zero. Then, as usual, we bring the last term to the other side of the equation. Now remember that in order to complete the square, we take this term, cut it in half, and then square it. It may seem trickier with variables instead of numbers, but it's really the same thing. So we get b over 2a, since dividing by 2 just puts a 2 in the denominator. And then squaring gives us b squared over 4a squared. This term will be added to both sides. Now on the left, we have a perfect square. So let's factor it and get x plus b over 2a quantity squared. While on the right, we can multiply c over a by 4a over 4a, so that we end up with the same denominator for both fractions, allowing us to combine them into one fraction. Now we can take the square root of both sides. For the left, that just gets rid of the exponent. On the right, instead of one big radical, we can put one on the numerator and one on the denominator. The numerator can't be simplified, so let's leave the plus minus there. But the denominator is a perfect square, so we can change that into 2a. Now we just subtract this term on the left from both sides to get x alone. Recognize that these have the same denominator, so we combine them, and there we have it, the famous quadratic formula. Even though you just learned how to derive this, it is still a good idea to memorize it. So repeat after me. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The reason this equation is useful is that we can take any quadratic, plug a, b, and c into this formula, and it will spit out the solutions to the equation. Let's try one example now x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now, we should be able to see from our knowledge of factoring that this can easily be expressed as x minus 1 times x plus 3, meaning that the solutions are 1 and negative 3. But let's plug the coefficients into the quadratic formula to make sure it works. a is 1, b is 2, and c is negative 3. So let's just replace all of these variables with the corresponding numbers. Now we just simplify step by step. Let's combine everything under the radical to get 16. Take the square root, which is 4, and now we have two answers, negative 2 plus 4 over 2, or negative 2 minus 4 over 2. These give us 2 over 2 and negative 6 over 2, which is 1 and negative 3, so the formula works. 
There are analogous formulas for cubic and quartic functions, but they are pretty complicated, so we can just stick to this one for quadratics. Remember, this can be used for any quadratic, so when factoring is impossible, or you just don't feel like doing it, this formula will be your friend. The arithmetic can get a little messy sometimes, and if you end up with a negative number for the discriminant, which is the b squared minus 4ac term under the radical, you will have to conclude that there are no real solutions to the quadratic, since we can't take the square root of a negative number. In such a case, you could express the solution using imaginary numbers, which we will learn about later. But whatever the case, if you prefer this method to actually completing the square yourself, then memorize the formula and plug away. Let's check comprehension. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.